Institute, the National Institute of Aging, the National Eye Institute, and also the Simons Foundation. Now, the Genome Sequencing Program recently held its annual consortium meeting, and the various centers discussed research updates, sequencing progress, and their goals and strategies documents, which will guide their plans for the rest of the current grant cycle. Additional meeting highlights included scientific talks from outside researchers, updates from collaborations with the Knockout Mouse Project, or COMET, Transomics for Precision Medicine, or COMET, and the Undiagnosed Diseases Network, as well as the clinical laboratory. And finally, they had opportunities within the program to build common resources. In terms of, in terms of some numerical updates, we'll go through each program. The Centers for Common Disease Genomics are using large-scale genome sequencing to discover genomic variants underlying common diseases, including uh, rare risk and protective variants. These centers also aim to understand common disease architectures and ascertain optimal study designs. 
As of May of 2018, the centers had sequenced over 101,000 samples. 58,000 reflect whole genome sequences and about 43,000 reflect whole exome sequences. The centers aim to sequence about 200,000 samples by December of 2019. Freeze one of these data, which includes 20,000 whole genome sequences, was made available in November 2017. The centers are currently working on freeze two, which will include whole genome sequences generated as of May 1st of 2018. Freeze two is intended for release uh, this coming summer. Announcement, NHRI is again soliciting applications for novel nucleic acid sequencing technology development that involve both DNA and RNA, direct, direct RNA sequencing. The first application due date for this new request for applications is June 27th. An advanced genomic technology development meeting will be held in, at Northeastern University later this month. Novel DNA sequencing and genomic technology developers from the program will come together over several days to facilitate collaborations and interactions. Meanwhile, an adjacent public meeting will allow broader community participation and also discussion of NHGRI's next phase of strategic planning. The goal of the Encyclopedia of DNA Elements, or ENCODE, project is to create catalogs of all functional elements in the human and mouse genomes and to make those catalogs freely available as a resource to the biomedical research community. In this effort, ENCODE has produced its Registry of Candidate Cyst Regulatory Elements, or CCREs, um, that is at the core of the project's encyclopedia. This registry 
integrates data produced by the ENCODE and the NIH Common Fund Roadmap Epigenomics Consortium to identify regions of the genome with potential functional activity. Now, ENCODE's new online visualization tool provides the means necessary to search candidate cis regulatory elements by ENCODE, otherwise known as SCREEN. Uh, in other words, to screen this registry to make it easier to annotate genomic data. For example, one can enter a single nucleotide polymorphism or genomic coordinate of interest indicated by the upper red arrow. And SCREEN will attempt to find candidate regulatory regions, such as the one indicated by the lower red arrow. One can also find out about the expression of a gene of interest by entering that gene name indicated by the upper left green arrow, and then clicking on the gene expression tab indicated by the upper middle green arrow, which then reveals the gene expression results indicated by the bottom green arrow. ENCODE tutorials, including a recent tutorial about using SCREEN, can be found on the NHGRI website, genome.gov. Altogether, SCREEN consolidates in one website information important to understanding gene regulation and expression and its relationship to human health and disease. ENCODE data are widely used. There are now about 2,000 <laughs> Three recent publications from ENCODE and related projects deserve highlight. So for example, in November 2017, the ENCODE Data Coordination Center and website as a source for data and metadata generated by